Hello there, beautiful people, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Miss Daringell. Here on my channel, we talk about all things Jesus Christ. We have Bible studies, prayers, biblical teachings, words of encouragement. If that's something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button and let's get right into the video. So today, my beautiful people, we're going to be talking about how to live a Christian life. A lot of people think it's, you know, hard. A lot of people, they don't understand. They don't know. Some people, you know, they judge people who call themselves Christians. And I want to remind you that being a Christian is meaning you're living a life that exemplifies the love that Jesus Christ had for us. You're going to live like, you know gonna follow jesus christ in your life that's what being a christian is some people have tried to give it a new definition but this video is going to tell you how to live like a christian so number one is you're going to get to know jesus christ this requires you to get into the word of god it requires you to get into a church home that you know they teach biblical principles they teach from the bible they are teaching the gospel in the church they have a accredited pastor somebody who is actually saved he's living for christ or she's living for christ then get around believers step one is so important that you get to know jesus christ step two you want to repent from your sins this is going to be important because this is going to allow you to live in a different type of way. You're going to become a new creature. When you become a Christian, you're supposed to become a new creature. You know, former things are supposed to be passed away. The type of lifestyle you used to live, whether you lived in fornication, whether you lived in idolatry, whether you had, you know, sexual immorality going on in your life, whether you was an extortioner, whatever you was before. Now you're going to be someone who is pure. It's important that you repent of your sins and you ask God for forgiveness and you get saved. You get, you know what I'm saying? If you want to get baptized, get baptized, whatever, you know, for you to live in a new sense. So you want to repent from your sins. That's step number two. Step number three is you want to commit your life to the most high God. When you commit your life to the most high God, the world no longer matters. The things of the world no longer matter. The money, the fame, the fortune the um the, the materialistic things in the world all that stuff will no longer matter because you're committed to god if you read god's word there are so many people who were chosen that he used and these people may have been kings they may have been regular men whatever they was but if you look at how they had to live they had to go in seasons where they were you know they were set apart they were isolated they had to go through things they had trials and tribulations but in the end you know they were blessed they got you know, either what they deserve, whether whether it was good or bad, but they had to live for God. They had to listen to God. They had to obey God. It's important that when you decide to be a Christian, that you begin to commit your life to God. This means you have to deny yourself the things that you love and wanted to do. You may no longer be able to do those things and you have to be okay with that. You have to have acceptance of the fact that I'm living for God now. You know what I'm saying? I'm different. I'm set apart. I can't do what everybody else do. Number four, once you become this person who is discipled, essentially, like, again, you've repented, you're living for God, you're in the gospel, you know, the God, you're spreading the gospel. Now it's important that you disciple others, meaning you spread in the gospel, you asking people, do you know Jesus? And you tell them, you're talking about Jesus everywhere you go, you're giving the glory to God when he blesses you with the things in front of other people. And God will bless you so much more when you give his name glory because he wants other people to know about him. So you have to, again, once you become disciple, you disciple other people. You help them on their walks with Christ. Number five, you want to participate in kingdom work, in your kingdom work, meaning you're going to be serving. It's important, I feel like, if you're a believer, to have a job where you're serving, whether that's in the healthcare field, whether that's in the hospitality field, whether that's in uh the education system whatever job that you're doing you want to have um you want to be serving and it's also important to serve in the church as well get active in your church there are so many ministries you can join there's so many community things going on in the world that you can again serve other people help other people love other people uplift other people be there for other people that is your kingdom work number six you want to love others like Christ loved us. This can be the hard part because, again, we're in our fleshly bodies. We are not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is just our example. You know, he is the epitome of love. He is God's one and only son that he sent for us to die for us, essentially. And that's why it's so important that you get to know Jesus and all of the things that he did in the Bible and the way he moved and the way he cultivated friendship and relationship with the disciples and other people. And all of the things that he endured within himself, as far as, you know, being tempted, finally being in the fleshly body, he's fasting, he's, he's traveling, he's doing so many different things. And also he's having a grace about himself and he's having a posture of humility and he's watching his mouth. Like he's doing so many different things 
So it's important that you examine who Jesus was and you begin to love other people like he loved us. Um, the word love is, you know, it's being defiled in the world right now. So you really want to tap into what is what is love? What is love to God? How did God love us? How did Jesus love us? You got to examine that. You got to research. You got to study it. And you got to, again, begin to love other people like that. And it's going to take practice. It's going to take time. Just know that God has grace for us. And he loves you so much. And you know what I'm saying? Even if you fail, just get back up and try again. Now, the seventh and final you know, way that you can, you know, live this Christian life is you want to honor biblical principles in your life. God has a foundation for us. He has so many commandments and statutes and precepts and principles that he wants us to follow. And these are for our protection. A lot of people, they're so disobedient, they don't understand that. Like God set these things forth for you for to protect you. So you want to honor biblical principles in your life with the foods that you eat, the person that you marry, the type of life you live. God has 10 commandments that are, you know, a base point. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, honor thy father and mother, keep the Sabbath day holy, don't use the Lord's name in vain. You know what I'm saying? These things are supposed to help you. And again, God has so many other principles in his word that he wants you to follow as well. When you honor biblical principles in your life, God is smiling. God is happy. He re He's rejoicing in heaven. So honor biblical principles in your life. It may not be easy because everybody else is living different, but focus on God once again. And I just pray that this video blessed you. Remember, being a Christian is not always easy, but it is so worth it. And getting to know Jesus and living for the Most High God is so worth it. So I pray this video blessed you. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next time.